is something that helps men to become faithful. You cannot be faithful on your own. If you don't help me, where else can I go? Sing it. Pray it. And Joseph found grace in the sight of his master and served him. It will take the finding of grace to be able to serve and serve faithfully. If you don't help me, don't help where else? Else can I? Jesus Christ. The Bible said that in the ministry of Jesus Christ upon the earth, that he, he prayed prayers with loud cries, loud cries to him that is able, to him that is able to save his soul from death. So there should be an acknowledgement. It should be an acknowledgement of a higher force. A higher force that must, must sponsor the move of your own life. Every man requires sponsorship. Every person requires sponsorship. Anything going on in your life that will, that will bet destiny it cannot occur by your strength alone. There are, man had been, the protocol of creation has wired it in that way. That man must require sponsorship. You need help. Either coming, help of God, either coming to you through other men, through men, or through the agency of his spirit himself. You need it and you cannot do without it. Many times, if the Lord wants to work out faithfulness, the, the, the capacity for faithfulness in your life, he begins to plant all manner of help around you so that you don't think that when help is around you it's just for the favor of pleasure no it's a sign that much will be demanded of you soonest are you understand what i'm saying can you hear me yes when when he plants favorable people around you don't celebrate and just rejoice understand that it's a preparation it's a preparation it's a sign that a demand will be heavily laid on you because to him whom much is given what yes much will be expected eventually it cannot break that protocol that's the way it goes and so whenever god puts you in the place where you find help where you find help people teach you lecturers teach you others train you friends help you fathers help you come into the chapel you have fathers in this chapel who show you love and and, and give you helping hands and prop you up even in the that you know that's the kind of things we enjoyed also while i was here i had many people in chapel there in those days they, they were like helping hands they they loved you you strengthen you it was not time for celebration it was all a sign to me that young man you have a lot to do for your generation and that's why god is positioning all this help around you are you listening to me now turn to your friend tell him when you find help then the responsibility is nearby you can go home with that this morning. So faithfulness is not possible until a man has found grace. And Joseph found grace in his sight. It was the grace he found in God's sight that was extended to begin to manifest and express itself in the life of his own leaders. And he found such grace and served under him. And the Lord made him through the, 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 the hand of Potiphar, the overseer, over his house and all that he had put into you know you know joseph's hands and it became clear that the lord blessed the egyptian house for joseph's sake what did the bible say the lord did what the lord blessed the egyptian house not just the house of potiphar not just the house of um of, um, the bible called it the egyptian house i think that's genesis chapter 39 and in verse 5 right Yes, Genesis 39, 5. The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. And that is symbolic of a nation. And so the Lord blessed the nation for Joseph's sake. Because the blessing kept growing until he became a national and a monumental figure that took charge in re restructuring and reorganizing the affairs, both economically and otherwise, of Egypt. And in the book of Psalms, scripture said that it was not just the economy that just Joseph changed. He even changed their government system because he was binding their senators with chains and binding their, their, their nobles with fetters and throwing them into prisons because they were not doing well. I pray that that will happen to Nigeria soon in Jesus' name. Ah, you are not saying a loud amen. 
in six days time oh, I hope you are ready six days time I pray that in six days this, this kind of thing I just said now will begin to happen to Nigeria when, when our brother will rise and begin to bind some of their senators in chains and, and some of their nobles in fetters and throw them into prison I, I have begun to sense such kind of courage in him because if he was able to go to, to, to terrorist stricken areas even when military men refused to give him a landing place and he told his pilots we have one life to live and one time to die so go there if he's dead let us die I said this one is my president I pray he arrives are you understand what I'm saying death is not a matter he said death was not a matter he can die and go I said yes now that you have taken hope beyond the grave you can give hope to living men the only time you can give hope to the living is when you yourself has carried hope beyond the grave Jesus couldn't give us hope in the living until he himself took hope beyond the grave and after dying and being buried three days he broke the grave and rose up again from the dead and he said where oh death is your victory where oh grave is your sting he said that the, the sting of death has been swallowed up in victory that was only when you can now have hope it was in his death that he gave us hope so anybody who will consider death anything to reckon with rather than standing to do the will of God because of death you can't give hope to men <laughs> are you understand what I'm saying you're looking at me like you don't understand I do you understand okay it was when he died that the veils became open and as the veil opened then he gave us access am I correct into the most holy place and the Bible said in the book of Hebrew that our hope has an anchor where where beyond the veil someone shout beyond the veil I can't hear say beyond the veil yes our hope has an anchor beyond the veil and symbolically in the priesthood of Israel you cannot enter here until you are dead you can't enter here until you are dead to the flesh can you hear me until you are dead to the flesh you can't enter here symbolically in the temple of Israel because anyone who is not dead in the flesh in terms of the purification sanctification consecration and you and he like a priest walks this way and opens the veil and enters here he dies am I correct he dies and what happens to him what beautiful they drag him out by the chains you know time so it shows you the mystery that God was teaching us that it is only the place of our anchor the, the place of hope which is beyond the grave that he has established and that was possible for you to access through his death so if if you have not conquered death and the fear of death you can't give hope to anybody is a law in the spirit so we pray that the atmosphere of this nation will stand in these six days to shake the systems of evil and beyond and bring redemption and freedom to the souls of men can we say loud amen, amen. so stewards talks about not just managers but superintendents those that are freeborn those that are entrusted you know with the management of the affairs of a system a kingdom a place and they care for it and they look into all the details that is required the expenditures and all of that that's a steward a steward is like one you know you know duty of one with the duty of dealing out proper portions to every servant in the house and even to children who have not come of age so a steward is is not really a servant a steward is a son it has to be the, 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 the fullness of stewardship in faithfulness. He said it is required that the steward be found faithful. The fullness of stewardship is sonship. The fullness of stewardship is sonship. I saw it in the book of Hebrew in chapter 3 and in verse 6. The Bible said Jesus Christ was faithful to his father's house. Not as a slave, not as a servant, but as a son. And so because he was a steward as a son... The Bible said he became higher than the angels in service. He became higher than Moses in service. He became higher than all of the prophets of the old in service. 
God reckoned to him that he was the chief steward because his faithfulness was not as a servant or as a slave. No, or as one who waited for wages. So his faithfulness was as a son. One who had an ownership mindset, an ownership mentality of the system and would serve not for wages and would serve not for gains. He became a king because his stewardship rose to sonship. So he was the one who dealed, you know, was dealing out the proper portions to every servant and even the children who have not come of age. And so he became not just the questors of the king, but the one who has the treasury of the kingdom. Everything about the treasury of the kingdom was in Christ. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 that he was the light of God. All that to say, God at sundry times and in sundry places has spoken through the prophet in the past. But this day he is revealing himself through his son whom he has made an express image of the father. So Jesus, all of God, the Bible said the fullness of the, all of the Godhead dwelt in him. How? Bodily, the fullness. So he was the treasure house of all of God's mysteries. He was the treasure house of all of God's mysteries. I, I want you to understand this, that the mysteries of God was in him revealed in the body. That is why I am excited that with that first Corinthians chapter four, it, you know, you know, it began by saying, let a man be so accounted of us so accounted of us as of the ministers of Christ the stewards of the mysteries of God somebody shout mysteries of God I can't hear you say mysteries of God the stewards of the mysteries of God so what you were given to manage is mysteries of God tell your friend that what they gave you to manage is the mysteries of God <laughs> is that clear now so have you even discovered what the mysteries of God are in order to begin to prosecute them administrate them preside over the mysteries of god and run it so what you'll be running you what you will run is the mysteries of god i oh i pray am, am i sounding strange are you understanding me i want to pray for you there are mysteries of god to run in your lifetime may you run those mysteries there are mysteries in god mysteries that's what the bible said that that we are stewards and so let a man be so so accounted of us as of the ministers of christ not pastors when he say ministers of christ not that you are pastor you must be a priest no i, I wish i would have all the time to tell you what it requires i will say three things uh, about the pillar of this so that we can understand the ministers of christ and steward of the mysteries of god moreover because it is required in steward that the man be found faithful that's how we arrived at verse 2 so the first thing is the mysteries of god who is the bearer of the who is the treasure house of the mysteries of god jesus christ all of god the whole of the godhead dwelt in him bodily so he's the treasure principles through your life they will work in patterns they will work in processes the mysteries of god how it is not that you'll be manifesting one strange no 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 they work in principles in patterns and in processes 
principles of, of wealth, principles of intelligence, of knowledge, principles of relationship, principles, principles, principles. Your life becomes a life guarded with principles. People come around you and they can learn principles. Are you listening to me this morning? Are you listening to me? Your life can become a model that can teach one or another the principle of God in a certain thing and in a certain dimension. It could be in the place of consecration, righteousness and holiness. You become the principle given. That's why the apostle Peter said that we are, we are living epistles. Living epistles. That is, many may not have the privilege of reading the Bible as much as some of us can read. But then your life is another Bible to be read. Are you listening to me now? And so we have five Gospels. We have five Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Christian. Look at your friend. Tell him we have five Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Christian. And tell him that many will not read the first four. They will read the last one. Am I correct? Have you observed, have you observed that? Many may not read the first four as much. They will read the last one. That's the last gospel. And if you can make provision for people to read that last gospel, then you are the minister of Christ. One that is the bearer of the mystery of God. One that is the steward of the mystery of God. Is making provision for the last gospel, which is the Christian. And so my heart is filled with joy when I begin to remember that the first model of stewardship was in the Son. In the Son. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6. And the Bible made it clear that the faithfulness of Jesus was not, was not like, like a slave, but Christ as a son over his house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast to this confidence, we rejoice in the hope that is firm. And it's firm unto the end. If you go back to chapter chapter 1 of the same Hebrew and you read down, you will see how the Bible said that there was no time that, that Moses served and the Lord said to the angels, worship him. But for the son, the Lord said, let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. And so... If we are to consider faithfulness and proving to be faithful, which is the topic we are looking at today, faithfulness, proving it. How do you prove this high position of still worship? Faithfulness is the expression, the, the expression you should find in a, in a, in a still word. A perfect still word shows faithful. A perfect still word proves faithful. And so, when you talk about faithfulness in still worship and how to prove it, I, I sat down in scripture and I began, to, I began to meditate. I didn't just want to look at it and approach it from, from definition or explanation point. I wanted to know, Lord, what's the revelation that will give us the spiritual sponsorship? The spiritual sponsorship to be able to arrive at this point. And the Lord took me to a scripture that looked so off point. However, it was soon I realized that it was not off point. Psalms 110 from verse 1 to the end. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I do what? Make thine enemies footstool under thy feet. He said, the Lord send the rod of your strength out of Zion. I thought the scriptures can be on the screen so to help them. Psalms 110 from verse 1. The Lord, verse 2, the Lord send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The three, in the day of his power, the people will be willing. Arrayed in holy majesty, coming out from the womb of the morning. And then he went on to talk about how he will handle kings. Then in verse 5, he began to say that thou art a priest forever. Thou art a priest forever. In the order of Melchizedek. A priest forever. In the order of Melchizedek. Then he spoke again about his rulership as a king. Whereby he will judge the kings of the earth and bind them with fetters. I began to wonder, why has the Lord referred to me to go and study Psalms 110 for this teaching this morning? And I realized that he was talking about the stewardship of Jesus and the office of the Spirit 
that was required to sponsor that stewardship. And so this morning, my interest is the office of the spirit, the spiritual revelation that the offices of the spirit required to sponsor stewardship if it must be faithful. If it must be faithful. Psalms 110 now revealed to me that Jesus was the priest who was also a king. He was the priest who was also a king. If you read that psalm, you will discover that he said, Thou art a priest forever. Thou art a priest forever. In the order of Melchizedek. Thou art the priest forever. Priesthood. Then he made him king because he said, Sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies full stool under thy feet. It was David that wrote this psalm. So Jesus, being a priest and also a king, was able to sit at the right hand of the Father, and the enemies were made full stool under his feet. They were not killed, they were just full stool under his feet. It means that the enemies were also around the house of his father. But though their existence prevailed around the house of his father, they had no dominion in control, in bringing any form of control around that house, which is called God's kingdom. Are you listening to what I'm saying? They had no dominion. They had no dominion given. And I also would like to say to everyone, that positions have been assigned. Talk to your friend, tell him positions have been assigned. Ah, I'd I like you to say it again. Look at him, say positions have been assigned. You see, the Lord sits on his throne, making his stewards, his sons, princes, and kings with him. And then, the enemy, given a position, from Psalms 110, he was assigned a position, and his position was under my feet. Where is the position of the enemy? Say it again. Say it personally. Say it under my foot. Where is his position now? When you read scripture, you will discover that. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians that, that you and I are seated, right? With God. Where? In the heavenly where? Places. Far above what? In the seated with Christ in the heavenly places far above principalities and powers that's the position assigned to you it confirms the scripture Psalm 110 verse 1 the Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand that is where we are seated with Christ we are seated with Christ David who wrote this I wonder how spiritual this young man was when he was writing it was Mark chapter 12 verse 36 it was in Mark chapter 12, the first 36, that the Bible reminded us that David himself spoke by the Holy Ghost. Have you read that in your Bible? Mark 12, 36. In the time that the Holy Ghost has not yet been revealed, the Pentecost had not yet taken place, David was a man who lived ahead of his time, spiritually ahead of his time, spiritually ahead of his generation. He began to speak by the Holy Ghost in the time when the Holy Ghost has not even been revealed for it was by the Holy Ghost that he said the Lord said to my Lord so the man has started operating in the Holy Ghost way back in the Old Testament and because he was a similitude of of the forerunner of the Messiah in prophecy David himself I began to wonder looking at his practical life his physical life his spiritual life and summing everything together i asked the question then what were the necessary offices that sponsored this man and made him so relevant with god in spiritual things that he could operate in the holy ghost when his world does not even know the holy ghost what were the things in him And the Lord brought three things in my understanding that defined David, it defined Jesus, 
it defined every faithful steward and it must define you and those three things are worship leadership and rulership let's say it together say worship say again leadership and then lastly say rulership these three are not are never the same the reason is because when i looked at the scripture i realized what the bible was saying there that that jesus was a priest who became a king what that means in essence was that a priest have one assignment all you know about priesthood the assignment is one and that is worship somebody say worship i can't hear you say worship so everything about priesthood is one thing worship and when i say priesthood and kingship when i say priesthood and kingship as a precursor for operating in the supernatural so that your stewardship can be faithful ha ah, i pray god will help me choose my words now so that i will round up quickly what i mean there is that every assignment of the priest is summed up in one word worship every assignment of the king is summed up in one word leadership are you understand what i'm saying but when a priest becomes a king then a ruler comes out are you understanding what i'm saying it will take one who is a priest worship who is also a king leadership if these two comes together then he cannot become a ruler the apostle peter told us he said for ye are a chosen what generation a royal what royalty is kingship and then priesthood so a royal priesthood king and priest king and priest revelation chapter 5 he said and out of his blood he has redeemed us he has redeemed us out of his blood he has redeemed us and every mankind from every tribe and every nation and every people and every tongue and have made us kings and priests that we will rule with him so you must be a king and a priest before you can rule now worship is directed to god worship is is the interaction that focuses onto god john chapter 4 he said that this god is spirit and they that worship him must do what worship him how so worship is not possible until it is done in the spirit david was in the spirit when he said the lord said to my lord did you see that now so if your life cannot operate in the spirit many things about still worship and his faithfulness must fail it cannot work the reason is because you 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 not only have have you not only have god and man to deal with you have elemental forces and things in creation to also deal with worship is directed to god leadership is directed to the people but rulership is directed to creation are you understanding what i'm saying i want to summarize it so that we can pray with regards to still worship that must be faithful like the pattern that we saw in scripture which is jesus christ the faithful steward he had his interaction with god perfect he had his relationship with men perfect he had his authority over creation perfect and on that account he was considered steward of the mysteries of god are you understanding what i'm saying and so if these three things must stand firm in your life and mine then we must consider the dealing of god in our lives with regards to these three areas my worship my leadership and then how much i rule when i say my worship then i am considering my priesthood if your priesthood is intact then the devil must remain under your feet
no argument about it if the enemy is standing tall before you eyeball to eyeball challenging you go and check your priesthood something may have happened to it turn to your friend tell him when the enemy is strong against you check your priesthood something has happened to it if your priesthood is strong and the relationship is 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 intact the enemy has been has been given a position where is the position again shout it where is the position he must remain there until the father is glorified he said the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until the enemy becomes so he must remain there when you consider these three things then you will know the pillar of faithful stewardship the pillar of so to prove your faithfulness if you must prove faithful then you must be proven in these three areas you must be proven in your worship you must be proven in your leadership then you must be proven in your rulership the ability to control creation what i mean in controlling creation is the measure to which the creation controls you or you control them that is why i know that what i am saying let me make it very simple for example as a student in this campus ought not this campus ought not to control you by reason of the world and their system you rather control them somebody say amen i have known it in my time and in my life that the systems of my environment and my world other than the kingdom of god has no right to control moses so what trends for them may not trend for me because my mindset will not fix with theirs what control what makes them what excites them may not excite me because my own control is not theirs as a matter of fact rather than them influencing me i must become the influence because these things are spiritually determined i pray for you may you rise in your spiritual position i want to hear a loud amen to that may you rise all around us god have men god have men he has set up in this pattern so that you can see for yourself as an example i'm not talking about things that are rocket science or impossible around you you see men in various areas and sectors of society look for christians that have broken through and have established dominion there in christ and you can say this is for us a pattern to follow you don't just the lord does not end in letters only no he reveals them in rema and that rema is not just a word is human beings expressed is human being live it so when you hear rhema is not one word coming for a specific proposal for in a specific time no rhema is the revealed word of god are you listening to me now and that revealed word of god the first rhema we received is jesus christ human being walking on the earth so i ought to be another rhema to my word somebody say i ought to be rhema to my word the revealed word of god has rhema the revealed word and the word became flesh the word became what flesh so your life your attitude your character your composure your comportment your language everything about you is revealing another manner of a man who is under a certain control of the kingdom that is not consistent with the controls of the kingdoms of this world and wherever that principle shows up in a man systems of this world shake when, wherever that principle shows up in a man the systems of the world shake for him you see our incoming president peter obi we pray so he is he is a, a roman catholic with a puritanical mindset do you know what i call puritanical mindset he has the puritan mindset the Puritan mindset are like those who they call the Amitish people. The Amitish people of Pennsylvania in during the 18th and 19th centuries. If you go and read about the Amitish people, they lived, they lived in the barest minimum of life. They have all they have all the resources. But when you look at them, you will know that they have the possession, and the possession does not have them. Jesus Christ spoke to the rich young ruler and said to him, Go, sell off your possession. Come take up your cross and follow me the bible said the man became offended am i correct became sad became tired and he left and we never heard of him again and so 
the problem is not that the man had Jesus Christ said he was sad because he had great possession that's what the Bible said I underlined it in my Bible I said yes this is what the Bible said but I have another language for it he didn't have great possessions great possessions had him do you understand what I'm teaching do you understand what I'm teaching it was great with that so the position was controlling him not him controlling the positions most of our leaders now are like that it is the possession that has them not them having the position so they are controlled their brain thinks their motivation their their motivation their energy their passion everything is because of what they are going to what steal and what they are going to collect so it is the possession that has that, that had them not them so when you have a puritanical mindset the possession is under your feet you can have all the world and it does not change your principles you can have all the world and it doesn't what now this thing is not is not a political it's, it's, it's scriptural it's 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 a sign it's as that's that's where stewardship and the faithfulness is defined that's how you know stewards that's how you know stewards they sit over great possessions and those great possessions can never have their hearts joseph sat over great possession as a matter of fact by by extension he even sat over potiphar's wife i hope you know that if he if he was to break the protocol of stewardship he can have potiphar's wife and the woman is cooperating but you can't have me because my heart is not controlled by these things in worship and in leadership that must produce rulership before your still worship is faithful your heart must be tested and if your heart is tested and it cannot prove faithful then your still worship is compromised and suddenly you will discover that the enemy who was supposed to be under your feet will do what will rear his ugly heads and when the ugly head is reared up, it comes to you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and begins to challenge you in a manner that ought not to be. So I told myself, whenever the challenge of the enemy becomes real over my flesh, my heart, whenever I look at my heart and the control of Christ is no more dominant there, and it is not the enemy, trying to move me into directions that i even know i ought not to go something is wrong with my priesthood i pray this morning that the lord will send you back with a heart and a burden a burden to consecrate and make your priesthood strong in the name of jesus christ i, I, I want to round up and so if priesthood is worship that means that true worship is not just a song. True worship is not just singing. No. True worship is a product of alignment of God's will. True worship is not just lifting up of the hand like we say. No. It's beyond that. When you look at what scripture has taught us, you will know that true worship is extended more than what a man can think. True worship affects everything everything i was reading about a servant of god who was a great teacher in his time and he was talking about worship and he said that for worship is the submission of all our will to god is the quickening of the conscience by his holiness is the nourishment of our mind with his truth he said that worship is the purifying of our imagination by his beauty and the opening of our heart to his love and the surrender of our will to his to his dominion worship is when we gather all these things in adoration and he said that this is the only responsibility by grace to which all human beings is capable i'm talking about william temple archbishop william temple each time i talk about worship i remember his statements so worship priesthood which, whose responsibility is worship is when your nature your conscience your mind your imagination your heart your will and your emotion comes together under the control of heaven then your priesthood is complete 
Ha! How can that be possible? Did you hear what I said now? That worship, when they say you a worship, that this man is a worship. He worship before me. It's when your nature, your conscience, your mind, your imagination, your heart, your will, your emotion, everything gather up together as an adoration to God. To which every human being is capable. The highest submission to which every human being is capable. And for Jesus, he was a perfect example. David was another example. And I said to myself, so, even in his sins, David, even in his sins, he was able to attain this level of, of recognition. Yes. So, righteousness and iniquity comes to play Right, they, they, they come as factors trying to compromise, compromise God's counsel. But for a man whose conscience is 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 alive, the, in the Bible, oh my God, so many things are coming to my mind. The Bible taught us about four kinds of consciences, and those four kinds of consciences will determine who is a worshiper, who is truly a worshiper. There is a weak conscience, there is a, a dead conscience there is a seared conscience and there is a living conscience all of them are in scripture there is a weak conscience a conformist conforms to everything Romans chapter 12 and in verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that you do what? offer yourself as what? a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God for this is your what? reasonable act of worship a translation puts it that way your reasonable act of worship so the priesthood I am talking about is offering of yourself to him as living sacrifice all of yourself all of him is given to the Lord and so when I look at it I, re I realize that when your nature and conscience and mind and imagination and heart and will and emotion are under his control then he sees you as a living sacrifice so all of these things must be laid on the altar and control must be given to him so i have come to realize that the worship that can produce leadership is to is a product of alignment to the will of god and it is such power that will produce great and mystery relationship that even the devil cannot compromise david was first a worshiper before he became a leader am i correct he was first a worshiper and i said worship is not singing let me tell you six things that worship is. Number one, it is citizenship. Number two, it is relationship. Number three, it is courtship. Number four, it is friendship. Number five, it is partnership. And number six, it is companionship. When these things are part of your worship, it will produce leadership consider it in the perfect relationship that ought to exist between a bride and the groom just consider it that's that's what can help you capture the reality of worship consider it the perfect relationship as planned by god that ought to exist between a bride and a groom there for a worship to begin your citizenship must be defined where do you belong? Are you of Christ? Or are you still of this world? Turn to your friend. Tell him, have you defined your citizenship? Simply put, are you born again? That's where it starts. That's where your priesthood begins. That's, that's where priesthood begins. Citizenship. Identity. Separation from the common for uncommon use. That's where priesthood begins. Identity. He said, speak to the children of Levites that they are to become priests and they are to serve the holy others. Separate them from among the Israelites. They shall have no portion with Israel for the Lord is their portion. Have you read that in your Bible? They shall have no portion with Israel for the Lord is their portion. That's where it's the citizenship. 
their identity was defined their citizenship was delineated and it was clear that they never belonged to this world Jesus Christ said that his dominion must remain must remain uncompromised because when the prince of this world shall come he will find nothing he will find what nothing of him of his in me that's worship when the prince of this world when the prince of your neck arises and comes to confront you what are their properties they will find in you when the prince of your neck rises every environment have princes from the kingdom of darkness that rules her you are in a working place you walk under a hospital you walk under a system you walk under a... every every environment have spiritual princes that's where the rulership aspect comes in when the prince of this world shall arise will you stand in a place that is beyond blame that is when you'll be proven as faithful so faithfulness will will come under trial when the prince of this world is revealed and they confront you am i talking to somebody here i am teaching this morning so that you can have an understanding of the mystery of faithfulness so when you say you must prove to be faithful you must prove faithfulness you must prove faithful then you know that there are three things to prove your priesthood your royalty are the two most important of his. and when a priest can rise to become a king then he becomes a ruler David was both a priest and a king he was not of the Levitical order he was not of the Aaronic lineage but he was a priest he could take up an effort he could pick up an effort wear it and inquire of the Lord he could go into the holy place pick up the go to the table of the showbread pick up the showbread and broke the showbread and ate those were highly restricted assignments of priests in his time those who tried it died he could I mean you know when you look at those whom the Lord killed for priesthood they were the people that tempered with some restricted assignments for priests but David did them and he did not die he did them and God accepted it so he was a king not even of the ironic order but he also did things that were prophetically symbolic that he was also a priest so there is a fulfillment that must come upon you and I listening to this message this morning that ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood you must fulfill this too before your stewardship can succeed in the battles that faces it to prove faithful for you to prove faithful is a fight to prove faithful is a fight and to be able to fight and conquer your priesthood must be intact the kingly anointing must be there so there are two things we're going to pray for this morning the priestly anointing and the kingly anointing what are we going to pray for now the priestly anointing and what the kingly anointing the priestly anointing is the anointing that will always produce citizenship if the priestly anointing is at work in you you will not want to spend one day separated from the lord just as a young man passionately in love with his bride or the bride to be can we can leave cannot live one day without remembering her you can't live a day without him your priesthood will produce citizenship it will produce courtship courtship is that they say is that relationship where purpose is defined and purpose is pursued so you are in the relationship where purpose is defined purpose is pursued not wasting your time with one guy or you a guy wasting your time with one lady and wasting your life and there is no purpose attached to it you are gone if that's the kind of thing around you now i'm sorry i'm just sorry are you understand what i'm saying now it is it is purpose defined purpose pursued that's courtship 
a young man and a young lady purpose defined if it is not and so they know this is where we are going then this is how we pursue it then you are there it means they are in courtship they are in relationship because they're they, they are they are friendship because they they no longer can do without each other they are in partnership because now some responsibility is given to her to do for me and some she gives to me to do for her are you understand so partnership we work together just like that so use this and understand how the life of a worshiper is with god meaning that i am god will by nature and they will look i see a jaya and i understand am i talking to somebody here and I am a Kaiseji Jai, and we cannot compromise the way is a Jai. So we we'll keep on going until we arrive there. That is a worship. It means you are in courtship. You are together with Him. So every day you need Him to for the business to work. Every day you need Him for the journey to keep going. There, any time you discover He is not there anymore, you cannot have your peace. You cannot have peace. But those of us who are married, we knew, we knew how the strength of relationship, you know, you know, you know, the strength of relationship that built during courtship and love. He was strong. He was strong. Strong that a busy young man like me, whom I know how busy I was by then, and I was working. You know, I was working as a doctor then. I was, I was, I was still. I was just about to round up my house job. He was busy but i because of her i saw myself traveling to asaba two times into every the first week i went and came back the next week i was going again now i was accepting programs like in worry i accepted program in worry i accepted program in in Unugeli because i knew it was not really because of the program it was because i knew that when i'm coming back i will branch in asaba and see her there and, and so she was the reason I was taking pain. And when, when I was there, I was there, I said, Moses, you are, the, you are going to Asaba to go and look for a woman like this. I, that is the power of God. That's the power. I'm talking about my wife. You know? Let me say a few things and we'll pray. In leadership, the first thing that your leadership will prove is sonship. If you are not a son, you can't be a leader. In this kingdom, that's the faithfulness of a steward is sonship. And to be able to arrive there, many things are involved in that stewardship. It is discipleship. It is mentorship. It is partnership. So, if your leadership is not surrounded by these things, you 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 can't you can affect men you can't raise them and any leadership system that has mentorship discipleship eh, that that teaches people stewardship and partnership it will produce kings it will produce kings it will produce rulers people who have relationship with god and they have these things was found in the life of david he had intimacy with god worship a priest then he was a king he could lead people out of him men of of depth men dis, disenchanted men discontented they came to him and he mentored them and they became giants they became mighty men am i correct that is leadership he sat over over israel and unified the nations and established for the first time a headquarter a state house in israel when he looked at that mountain fought with the jebusites and conquered them and established there and called the place zion that was david he was the one that established a physical place called zion for the first time whereas zion is a spiritual a spiritual concept that defined the kingdom of god all over the place abraham was only able to scratch zion at mount moriah where he sacrificed his son isaac as a symbol of jesus christ when the replacement of the lamb was made and that mountain was where jesus was crucified and around that territory where jesus was crucified that's where the headquarter of david's kingdom and the throne 
was established so where the cross was lifted was still where the throne was established the cross speaks of the priesthood the throne speaks of kingship david brought kingship and priesthood together and that's why in his days he ruled and he became a steward that was worthy in the eyes of god but all of this he was only a picture of christ which was to come are you following what i'm teaching this morning it was only but a picture of christ and in christ we all are to go take after the same pattern we all in christ are to take after the same pattern therefore your cross must be lifted your throne must be lifted if this too is not in place your still worship will be under attack because the enemy cannot remain under your feet he will always rear up his ugly heads influence your life manipulate your life put plant things that is not your character and even when you want to see yourself do righteousness you will discover that you cannot paul said in romans 7 and in verse 14 that which i want to do i cannot do but the things which my soul hates to do that i see myself doing and he said if these things happen then the law is spiritual it is i that is carnal sold as a slave to sin this morning we're going to pray for two things i won't take your time again it is the priestly anointing and the kingly anointing rise upon your feet rise upon your feet i would have loved to settle down and teach this like a bible study and then take it down to everyday character step by step character what what you do daily in order to prosecute it that when you are presiding on this you'll be able but close your eyes I love you Lord for your mercy never ending all my days I am kept in your word from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I have been of the goodness of God. Can we lift up our hands? Let's sing it together. Everyone together. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. goodness of God. Lift up your hands. I love your voice. You will let me through the fire and in darkest night you were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness can we lift up our voice together and let's sing it together all oh, my, oh, my life you have been faithful all my life all my life you have been so much to pray for the priestly grace and the kingly grace for every steward these are the two things required to become a perfect steward the kingly grace and the priestly grace when these two grace come upon you then you become a ruler a ruler one that can control creation one that can control creation in the spiritual realm there are things that are done in sorcery to control to control us as a nation but when the church began to pray and hit them the thing started breaking from the realm of sorcery and as the sorcery were breaking the people's mind was getting liberated and people were now responding so what is happening to us is not just that god is moving through physical something is also breaking in the spiritual realm so there are people that rose to begin to control things as rulers in the spirit i can tell you that more in the second in the second service i, I am involved and connected to some of them we know the extent we have gone in the in the backstage in the background 
concerning breaking the sorcery over the nations over the nations the bible said on this mountain i will break every covering cast that is put upon the people it takes priests and kings to rule in righteousness your worship is directed unto god your leadership is directed unto men but rulership is directed over creation so that you can control spirits and control things let the high praise of the lord be upon their mouths and the two-edged sword in their hands to execute leadership and ruling so pray this morning if the devil is still controlling your life and heart then check your priesthood and your priesthood begins right from citizenship if you are you if you are of christ then your citizenship must have been defined talk to the lord and i want to make a call this morning and to pray for a few a few that will want to make fresh commitments with jesus christ you are in this place and you feel that your work with christ is is really challenged and is under attack you feel that your work with christ is weak and you want to make fresh commitment with jesus you feel that the environment is controlling you more than you could control it the environment seems to influence you more than you can influence it it's not normal and you want to make fresh commitment with christ lay your hands upon your chest you feel that your salvation is dead and and you want it alive by carrying the fire of god's grace you see the topic said faithfulness proving faithfulness you must prove faithful you don't prove anything until you are subjected to testings and trials it is testings and trials that proves everything fire proves gold chemicals prove elements so if something must go through certain things to become proven and now your faith does not prove your priesthood please one minute cameraman please shift let them come i want to pray with them from the altar so come close camera shift your your your, your faithfulness does not prove your priesthood and on account of that you have noticed that the enemy that ought to be under your feet has reared his ugly head over your head it's, as a matter of fact it looks as if you are now the one on the foot oh come i want to pray with you you can kneel down for a while and we talk to god those of you that are in the congregation you will join me in praying for them so stretch forth your hands and pray for these brethren my journey with god began this way it, at many points of my journey i found myself stumbling and battling that was why i said to you that my five years in this chapel from 2004 to 2009 because i came into this place 2003 and after a year i came into this chapel 2004 to 2009 it was they were the year of remodeling spiritual remodeling i spent many nights here alone lying down on this this look at this cross it was my it was my spot of prayer i would just come in and i'll lay prostrate here and i'll pray in tongues from from that night till morning i may just be coming back from lectures clinical class we just come back i will come with my bag and everything no going to hostel no eating i do my fastings in those days from around from around three and carry it over into the next day and go to lecture with it and come back late in the evening to pray so most times it was it was 18 hours 21 hours fasting 24 hours sometimes i carry it to 28 42 hours. so it was that way and the remodeling was i didn't know these things were i wasn't doing it because i needed god or i wanted to manifest something no i was doing it because i read the bible and i wanted to say that these things in the bible is working in my life so there was a drive to know God for real and this was the spot I cannot forget it most times I laid down here 2004 to 2009 and for me each time I come into this house I will look at this place and I will, I will say this was my ground zero my ground zero place of intercession and the London is caught it formed my life I want to pray for you stretch your hand towards them stretch your hand towards them can you pray in tongues if you can those of you here you can you can, you have the baptism of the holy ghost pray in the spirit yes you can be baptized in the holy ghost and still be on that battle because your priesthood has not been verified yes it happens 
I, I experienced it too. I passed through it also. So pray in the spirit. As I speak over your lives, that this has become the Lord establishing a fresh counsel over you. Then dominion will come. Then citizenship will be proven. Then sonship will be defined. Sonship will be defined. Then partnership will ensue. Partnership will show the Lord walking through through men, apportioning and delegating His purpose through your life, and making you fulfilled, making you fulfilled in the things you are able to accomplish, helping you to become fulfilled in the things you accomplish. You rise to the point where you influence your world, and not your world literally influencing you you rise to a point of grace where you influence your environment and not your environment influencing you things that the Lord has placed under your care and under your command you become a steward over them Joseph influenced Egypt and not Egypt influencing him Joseph controlled Egypt and not Egypt controlling him Jesus controlled the whole world and not the world controlling him that is stewardship to prove faithful you must become a person of control Receive grace to control. Receive power to control. Receive authority to control. It is priesthood. It is kingship. And I pray that this anointing be established upon you. This morning, all that the enemy has held strong against your hand, we break it in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Return to your seat. Just close your eyes and give God thanks. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me father we thank you for speaking to us clearly thank you for your servant you used to speak to us lord we ask that fresh grace be released upon him lord we ask that you help us to arise from this service with a resolve to live a life of faithfulness unto you to worship you and to always show loyalty in our lives so that indeed we can be leaders we will also rule receive all glory for in jesus mighty name we have prayed please be seated just two things this morning wednesday is ash wednesday and we'll have a holy communion service by 5 p.m here in this chapel 